The Yukawa theory describes the interaction between fermions uh, through the exchange of a scalar boson. Its interaction Lagrangian is written as. Notice the analogy with the Lagrangian we had to describe the interaction between uh, bosons, uh, scalar bosons. The reason why we have psi bar psi and not just psi squared is because uh, psi bar psi is a scalar and therefore uh, is the right way to build a Lagrangian which has to be uh, a scalar quantity at the end. As in the case of the uh, phi 4 theory, Feynman diagrams can be used uh, to uh, describe uh, basic processes using uh, perturbation theory. So in the case where the coupling constant G is small, but now the Lagrangian is not the same and therefore the Feynman rules are not uh, all the same. In fact, what changes is uh, the vertex and the lines connecting the vertex. Because we have uh, three fields here, the vertex will only connect three lines and not four like in the 5-4 theory. And one of these lines is a boson, a scalar boson, while two of these lines have to be uh, fermions. So the dashed line represents the scalar boson phi. Um, and in order to distinguish between psi bar and psi, we are going to uh, have a narrow pointing toward uh, the vertex and one pointing outward the vertex. And now the value of the vertex is minus ig. So as an example, let's consider the scattering of a proton with an antiproton. We have two tree diagrams contributing uh, to this amplitude in the lowest order. So let's calculate the second diagram as an example. So we labeled each line with uh, their four momenta and we have two vertices we don't account for the propagator of the external line, but we have one internal line, so we need to write its propagator. We need to sum over the momentum for the internal line. And we have energy momentum conservation at each vertex. The first delta function kills the integral and changes q into k1 plus k2. We then recognize that the second delta function uh, is just a global energy momentum conservation, which we don't need to write explicitly. In principle, for the amplitude to be uh, physical, it should not depend on epsilon. Therefore, we need to see uh, under which condition epsilon can be neglected and taken to zero. For this, we need to choose an inertial frame where we can express the component of the four momenta, and it's natural to choose uh, the center of mass frame. By definition of the center of mass, the sum of the momenta is zero. Therefore, we have, uh, if we have p for the, f uh, the proton, we have minus p for the antiproton. And because they have the same mass, if they have the same magnitude of uh, the momenta, they necessarily have the same energy. Therefore, k1 plus k2 is simply equal to 2e for the time-like component and zero for the space-like component. If the mediator of the interaction is lighter than um, twice the mass of the proton, uh, this uh, denominator will never be zero, and in this case we can get rid of the i epsilon. But if this is not the case, then we can have potentially a division by zero. This means that when 2e is equal to the uh, mass of the mediator, uh, we have a huge uh, amplitude for the process. And that's actually how we discover new particles, is by colliding um, two known particles uh, with enough energy to produce uh, new particles which could act as their mediator. And we will see, uh, when that happens, a resonance in the probability for the process or the associated cross-section. The overall behavior of the cross-section as a function of the energy uh, depends on different things like uh, the other diagrams as well as kinematic prefactors in front of the probability. However, this resonance behavior is uh, clearly due to this diagram and occurs when 
uh, the mediator is produced on mass shell and that's only possible um, when it's a heavy uh, particle which is created which is heavier than uh, the sum of the mass of the incoming particles. Uh, now we could ask why um, do we have something which is still finite and doesn't diverge to infinity because we have a division by zero? In fact this is because we used uh, the propagator for the mediator assuming that it was a free particle, like a particle which would not be able to decay. Indeed we won't show it but if we were to account for the possibility um, for the boson to decay, that will introduce additional term in the denominators, imaginary term, proportional to um, the width of the resonance, or inversely proportional to the lifetime of the particle, and which will naturally uh, allow us to take uh, I epsilon equal to zero. But of course, if a stable particle were produced, it will not be able to decay, and therefore we will have a problem. However, it turns out that there is no such a thing as a stable uh, scalar spin zero particle. The lightest spin zero particle we know of is a pion and it's unstable. The pionot, for instance, decays into two photons. Um, therefore, there is no such a thing as a spin zero particle which does not decay into lighter particles. And we will always have uh, a resonance um, when we produce these new, p these scalar particles. Um, which will be uh, with a finite width.